Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about the shortest remaining time next scheduling algorithm. Now, this is a preemptive algorithm, which means that a process can be interrupted and another process can take its place and start executing. So in this mode, the criteria is that it keeps checking if another process with shorter processing time has arrived. And if another process has arrived, which has a shorter duration of burst time or processing time, then in that case, it preempts the currently executing process. So it moves the currently executing process into the ready queue and brings the new process, which is with a shorter processing time into the running state. It is also known as shortest remaining time first or shortest remaining time. So in the examination, you might be asked this question differently. They might ask you, please solve this problem using the SRTF or SRT scheduling algorithm. So they all are the same, all right? So let's see how we can solve the problem. So in the examination, you might get a question like, uh, there are five processes, each have an arrival time and a processing time respectively. And please go ahead and calculate the average turnaround time, average waiting time, etc. And we can do that using the Gantt chart. So let's see how we can do it. Okay, so in the Gantt chart, what we're going to do is we'll start with the time interval of zero and we'll see which process have arrived at time interval zero. So you can see P1 has arrived. There are no other processes that have arrived at the time zero. So arrival time of P1 is zero. So we put P1 first. So we'll move the P1 from the ready state to the running state, which is will start its execution. And since it has three processing time, we are not going to run it for three units like we did in other scheduling algorithms the reason for that is because this is preemptive preemptive means that you know we need to allow other processes also to get a chance of execution and the rule that we have established is that uh, it'll keep checking after every one unit of time in case if there's another process that has arrived and if it has a shorter processing time than the one that's currently executing then this will move back to the ready queue and that particular process will come inside of the running state. Okay, so we'll run it for one interval and we'll see at interval one, are there any process that have arrived? No, because all of these are two and above. So there's nothing else. So we'll run P1 for another one unit. And now is there anything? So, so first we'll go ahead and cancel this. So earlier we had two remaining. So at this point we had Two units remaining and at this point now we have one unit remaining so at so this actually becomes two because one plus one is two yeah so at two interval are there any other processes let me see uh yeah p2 has arrived now are there any others no there aren't now when you when you need to so how will you decide whether to bring in p2 or not well it says that you first check if its processing time is the shortest. So what are the processes currently? So current, currently we have processes P1, which is already in the running state, and then we have P2, which is in the uh, ready queue, right? Now, P1 has one remaining, one unit of time remaining, and P2 has six units of time remaining. So, so definitely we can't bring P2 in because its processing time is higher than the one that's currently being executed. So that is why we can't put uh, we can't bring P2 in. So we'll have to let P1 get executed. So we'll put P1 over here. Like we said, we'll run for one unit of time each, every time, and then we'll keep on checking. So we'll run for another one unit of time. So now we run that P1. So now P1 is done. It's finished its execution. Great. At time interval three, let's find out if there are other processes that have arrived. Yes, P2 had already arrived. P3 has also arrived, arrived because they have the uh, arrival time of two and three respectively, right? So now at this point, uh, whom to bring in out of the two? Well, the rule says shortest remaining time, right? So which has the shortest remaining time? Shortest remaining time. In fact, these are not even started yet, so, but you can say th see that this has the, got the shorter, this has got the, P3 has got the shorter processing time. So that's why bring, we bring P3 in. We run it for one unit. So this becomes zero, so P3 is done, it's finished its execution. At unit four, which are the 
other processes. So at unit four, we already have P2 and then we now have P4 as well. Now, which has the shortest remaining time? So P2 has six and P4 has four. So definitely P4 wins. So P4 comes in here inside of the running state and then we run it for one unit. So P4 becomes three now. Again, we'll compare at five. Are there other processes that have arrived? Yes, they have. So at five, interval five, we also have P5 that has arrived. So which are the ones that are remaining? P4, P5, and P2. So which has got the shortest? So six, uh, three, and four. So definitely P4. So we can't let anyone else come into the ready queue. Sorry, uh, running queue. So we have to bring in, we have to let P4 continue because uh, its remaining time is less than the others. This has six, this has three, this has four. So three wins, which is P4. We put P4 over here, run it for another one. So that becomes six. Now P4 becomes two. Again, we'll have to let it run because of course we can clearly see that it's not going to happen. So we continue P4, run it for another one. That becomes seven. And then finally run it for another one. So that becomes eight. Okay. So one, two, three, four. So it ran for four units of time. Then at eight, we have P2 and P5. So P4 is done. Which has got the shortest remaining time? Well, definitely P5. So we'll let P5 run. So now I can, instead of just making it nine, 10, 11, 12, you know that there's no any other competition. The competition is only between these two and clearly P5 will win each time because it's got a shorter uh, processing time, the remaining time, right? So I'll let P5 run for four units because it makes sense. It doesn't make sense to keep writing 9, 10, 11. I can just say 8 plus 4, which is 12, okay? So P5 is done, okay? And the only thing remaining is P2. So bring P2 in and that's got six time units. So 12 plus six is 18 and that's sorted. All right, so let's calculate the completion time. So when did P1 get completed? Let's look at from the from behind. So we have P1 at three unit, three interval, okay. Then P2, well, P2 got completed at 18. So 18, right? Uh, P3, P3 got completed at four. So we put four over here. And P4 got completed at eight. So we put eight over here and P5 got completed at 12. So put 12 over here. Calculate the turnaround time T80. So that's, that's CT minus 80. So three minus zero is three. 18 minus two is 16, 4 minus 3 is 1, 8 minus 4 is 4, 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, similarly we calculate the waiting time which is T80 minus PT, so turnaround time minus processing time, so 3 minus 3 is 0, 16 minus 6 is 10, 1 minus 1 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0, 7 minus 4 is 3. Okay, so in the examination, it will ask you to calculate the average turnaround time. You can make a total of this 3 plus 16 plus 1 plus 4 plus 7 and divide that by number of processes, whatever that value comes to, that becomes your average turnaround time and similarly average waiting time will be 0 plus 10 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3 divided by 5 whatever that value comes in that becomes your average waiting time all right so i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much bye, -bye.